Speaking of which, um, you, you represent the country mm-hmm. on many different aspects. Uh, ABEC? Um, ASEAN. ASEAN. Business Advisory ASEAN Council. Business Advisory Council. Um, uh, and the East Asia Business uh, Council. It started with uh, YEAB, isn't it? You, you were the founder of Young Entrepreneur Association. Yes. yes. Uh, I, I wanted to ask this question because I think that um, a lot of Bruneian miss, miss this um, this uh, golden ticket mm-hmm. to the outside world, which is you know joining organization and contribute and give. Mm-hmm. And as a result, you are where you are right now, having met and selfie with so many world leaders. <laughs> um, yeah, please, please, uh, you know, if you can elaborate on the importance of of um, volunteering or giving your time. Uh, or joining international organization that leads you to where you are. Okay, so I guess, so w- before Young Entrepreneurs, yeah. I actually started by volunteering for Dr. Timothy Ong as right. a liaison officer. Yeah, we met there. For an ABAC meeting. Yeah. yeah. So that was, um, I just wanted to meet people. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, exposure to people from not only within Brunei, mm-hmm. Um, so I volunteered for that, and that kind of led me to be the executive support for Dato Hamdila, who was a member of the APEC Business Advisory Council. Mm-hmm. So by doing that, I got more exposure, and then um, Brunei hosted APEC in the year 2000, yep. and that was the year that we um, formed the Young Entrepreneurs Association. Right. So that that was where we got... Basically, when I first came back to Brunei, I was 21 and involved in the family business, which was very much Mm -hmm. male-dominated and very difficult. I had difficulty trying to fit in Mm -hmm. with how business was done (laughs) because I came from university, you know, so it's theory and all that, (laughs) but actually being in it Uh was very difficult. And so, like trying to also find like-minded people that had the similar kind of um, issues, I guess, was how the Young Entrepreneurs formed. Mm -hmm. So it was like, um, it was a group of us, I think about 10 of us, who had all come back from studying overseas, who were all maybe having different challenges with fitting into the work Mm -hmm. environment in Brunei. And so we formed a, a, a group of us, primarily to support one another. Right. Um, and also to have a stronger voice um, because what we realize is when we're trying to get, let's say, get government projects or meet certain people, if I was going to go and ask for an appointment, I wouldn't get it. Right. But if an association did, it's a stronger voice, you would probably get the meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we started off like that, so forming all the connections, um, asking our members what, let's say, government departments are they, were they interested in finding more about? We would have dialogue, so we kind of started off the, the whole dialogue between and government prior and Prior to that, there was nothing like this in Brunei? Not really, no. Yeah. Um, so that's where it started, the whole dialogue between private sector and the governments. Right. And I think now that the way everything's moved, it's, we realise how important that is. Yeah, we were talking about uh, volunteering, about joining um, organisations. And then your, your next role after um, Young Entrepreneur Association, it was at ASEAN? Or? Yeah, so while being a member of the Young Entrepreneur Association, so as we build up our um, uh, presence, I guess, mm-hmm. as a group of young entrepreneurs in Brunei, like a formalized group, mm-hmm. um, we started also getting invitations to go and represent Brunei abroad, you know. Um, so a lot of times what would happen is a lot of the let's say the ASEAN country or anywhere, any country, when they had an invitation for a particular conference mm-hmm. or a workshop or something and they wanted a young entrepreneur from a particular country, yes. those invitations would come to the Young Entrepreneurs Association. Okay. So that gave the, the members the advantage of being able to take up mm-hmm. these kind of... Some were fully paid for, some were, you know, like you had to pay but mm-hmm. you can attend. When I was doing the entrepreneurs, I always used to say to the members you get what you put in. Mm -hmm. So if you're not willing to take up these, you know, these advantages you get from being a member, um, then, you know, no one can really help you move on if you want to move on to something else or achieve something else. You have to take it. Um, 
So a lot of times, a lot of the different members, you know, we go out, we represent Brunei, mm -hmm. you get the exposure. Right. Um, it opens your eyes. Um, I mean, I always say to myself, I, have, I try to make sure I leave the country at least every three months. <laughs> Just to keep my mind open right. as well. You know, I think it could be it would be for everyone. If you are stuck in a particular situation yeah. or or your your routine for too long, you get stuck there. And I find for me that's why travel is so important. So every three months I want to just go out there and just mm -hmm. open my mind again, meet different people and, you know, experience different food, different, you know, right. scenery. Um, yeah, so so from the young entrepreneurs, that became so it became like the the main uh, young entrepreneur group in Brunei, mm -hmm. which then led to being invited to a lot of regional um, conferences, events, and things like that, and um, being recognised within the country as well, mm -hmm. and then doing the dialogues with different government departments, mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, it. So when I left, obviously handed over to someone else, mm -hmm. and. That was the time when my son was around, so I actually took myself out of everything. Um, but about, I think, three, um, 2013. So my son passed away in 2011. So in 2013, I actually got an offer to be... I was actually asked, would you be interested in being on the ASEAN Business Advisory Council? Mm -hmm. And there was just a moment where I thought, yeah, it was just like that. Wow. So I said yes. Mm -hmm. And then it all went from there and um, very, very steep learning curve because, you know, at that point I didn't even know which 10 countries were in ASEAN, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, because uh -huh. it wasn't part of my day to day business mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it, steep learning curve because 2013 Brunei hosted uh, ASEAN, okay. which meant that the government was the one who facilitated all the government meetings for ASEAN mm -hmm. and the private sector, Absolutely. which was three of us, mm -hmm. yeah, were facilitating all the private sector events. Huge task. It was, it was a huge task. So it was like a, a whole year I had basically two full-time jobs. Um, yeah, <laughs> one paid, one not, <laughs> you know. But at the end of the day, I learned so much from it. You know? mm -hmm. I made many, many connections. And so I'm, this, this is my sixth year being on the ASEAN Business Advisory Council. And um, the end, yeah, so it's the end of my second term. So the one thing I think that I started off by wanting to just have exposure outside, you know, learning new things. Mm -hmm. and all. I've come to the point now where the most important part is the connections I make with people. Right. So it's become a different kind of, I started off wanting something and now I'm realizing that the thing that I gain the most from is that so it's the the connection and not just the swapping the name cards it's the deeper connections that I've made along the way and you know people I've met along the way have become friends mm -hmm. um, and then I've also found that these friends can also translate to business right um, so it was not it became more about I'm going there to try and drum up business it became more about I'm going there to form relationships which may become business. Happens, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember having uh, you know, this conversation with you in a social event very, very quickly. You mentioned that uh, you know, by exposing yourself outside, sometimes you, know, you don't feel that lonely, that you are mm. the only one thinking this way. Mm. And, and uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, maybe I, I added that in, you know, maybe Brunei, we are with such a small amount of population. Mm. You know, you don't find commonalities, yeah. but you're, you're closer to, to the mindset uh, with people outside than you are at home, mm -hmm. especially when you're doing things of common interest, yeah. which yeah. is very interesting. Yeah. 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 And, and now the way the world is, it's so easy to be connected. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we can still be in Brunei, mm -hmm. but we can be, you know, like making connections with mm -hmm. other people. What does a typical um, ASEAN meeting entail? Um, Okay, so we would have, we have about four or five meetings a year, mm -hmm. and um, what we do is basically, we, are, we talk to the government mm -hmm. side, so we represent, so there's three members from every ASEAN country, right. from the private sector, so we sit on the council, so 
we um, talk about issues that are important to the private sectors mm -hmm. of ASEAN. We present those issues or the issues and possible solutions mm -hmm. to the leaders um, of ASEAN. And that's where things like policy formation comes in, um, things like that. So it, I guess it's, it's like it's a dialogue again. Mm -hmm. between, ten different countries. Yeah. You know, so how, how could it all be common? Well, the thing is what we do is we pick out ones that are common to most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's things like, you know, um, uh, well, my, so when I started doing it, I gravitated towards women entrepreneurs and young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I started off while as a member was to start off a young, young entrepreneurs um, advisory council. So the, what I would, wanted to see was representatives from every young entrepreneur group in the 10 ASEAN countries meeting together and coming up with their shared kind of goals um, of, you know, and what they have a link to us, to ASEAN Business Advisory Council, which then has a link to the leaders. So it allowed us to get the young entrepreneur views from the region. Very you know, important. Yeah, into our reports, which goes to the leaders. Same thing for women. Mm -hmm. So it's about, it was about, for me, it was about getting their voices in there, you know, that um, it was not just the older business, mm -hmm. it was also the women who are in business, the youth that are in business, and getting a broader kind of picture of what it's, you know, for what it's like for businesses in ASEAN. So when it comes to young entrepreneurs, even I myself see, like in Brunei, mm -hmm. the changes that have been made um, over the years, over the 20 years since I've been doing young entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. now is a good time to be a young entrepreneur. You know, there's so much support there, there's DARE, you know, so DARE was actually something that came about from discussions in ASEAN where, where like a country like Brunei can learn from the best practices of the region. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like, okay, we're talking about the discussion of how do you create a, a nurturing environment for young entrepreneurs to flourish mm -hmm. without limiting them and their creativity. And so then, you know, like us as members, we can talk to people from let's say Malaysia or mm -hmm. Thailand and how did they do it how was it you know and figure out which one was successful or not then basically bring it back and kind of say I think that Brunei should have an SME body that mm -hmm. uh, provides this kind of ecosystem and all that and then you know that's how things work so it's I guess more about um, the making the changes within the country from outside wow mm. and you would get support from people outside as well yeah, so we so the the way we would do it is we facilitate. So let's say the government wants to do something like that, mm -hmm. we can help them to have the linkages with the people who have had success stories or any any way like that. You know, like the share the best practices that we've seen that have been you know shown to us during our meetings. Because sometimes during our meetings we have also people who come in and like tell us what they're doing. So um, for example. From Singapore, we got uh, where someone came in and spoke about is it Ace? Um, it's a basically a, um, a group, a company, or a, a sh an offshoot that actually helps um, incubates mm -hmm. companies, helps companies by incubating them and providing them with mentoring, access to financing, all the uh, office space, things like that. As members, um, we kind of bring that back when we have discussions with the ministries here. We say, look, mm -hmm. we, this is what we've learned. You know, maybe it's something, if you, if you need a kind of con contact for that person, here it is. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, that's how we kind of do things. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> how, how, do you, how, how does one behave in international platform? You know, uh, coming from a small country, there's, there's obviously the sense of inferiority complex, whereby, you know, you're not sure, I'm not sure about you, but you know, when I do that, I go, I'm from Brunei, you know, and the next question is, where is Brunei, what is Brunei, you know, um, how does one behave and to be a, a good um, ambassador, what are the tips? Well, okay, one thing I guess for me is I never think of Brunei as being any worse than anywhere else. Uh -huh. um, so when I, when people say, oh, it's so small, Mm -hmm. you know, or things like that, then for me it would be like, yes, but sometimes small is good. Mm -hmm. You know, there are benefits. Like, for example, um, 
So I said that there was three private sector members and, and they are the link with the government. In Brunei, we are so fortunate to have a very strong link with our government and mm -hmm. the ability to actually speak to them. Right. In other countries, there's so many levels that mm. they never get to speak to anybody. Yep. You, you'd have a private audience with his majesty? No, so. <laughs> no with, the, with, the, uh -huh. with the ministries that Absolutely. are involved. Uh -huh. So in Brunei, it's small, yes, uh -huh. but we do also at the same time have the direct means of communication, uh -huh. uh, which, you know, which helps us move things. Okay, if we're small, even though we're small size, the reason we're in ASEAN is to have access to a bigger marketplace. Mm -hmm. Brunei is small, but we are safe. Brunei is small, but we have beautiful blue skies. We have a good environment. You know, like there's so many things that it's just basically about not looking at it as a disadvantage, but kind of flipping it over. Mm -hmm. Because there are other countries that complain. It, it sounds like you have given this issue great thoughts. Um, well, yeah, over the years, the, yeah. you always get asked the question. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, the advice that you give for young people, yeah. yeah. You know, what, what do you think, uh, you know, do nice issue? Uh, and, and, you know, your, your daughter is 15 year old. You know, what kind of advice, you know, do you give to prepare herself for the future? Um, well, at the moment, what I'm saying to her is just do the best you can, mm -hmm. figure out what it is you like to do, mm -hmm. and just keep learning, you know, like, um, so when my daughter was growing up, one of the most important things for me was reading. Mm -hmm. So when she was very, very young, I read to her. As she grew up, she would read one page, I would read one page. Wow. And then as she grew up, you know, she's the one who's reading. And then as she grew up, now she reads herself. But instilling the reading culture for me was very important because reading gives you the, allows you to learn. The knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And mm -hmm. also, not just the act of getting good grades, but the act of learning, knowing how to learn. So I, I want my daughter to also kind of, whatever she wants to learn, she knows how to go about figuring out how to learn it. Uh, not to get maybe A's or A stars, mm -hmm. you know, but just the act of wanting to continuously learn. So lifelong learning, That's I guess. The, the most important skill right now, isn't yeah. it? Because you can access to any information. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but um, would you not be worried about you know, the, the economy, the reliance on, on oil price, which is so insecure for young people? Um, you know, what, what advice do you have for them stepping into the job market? I guess it's be good at what you do, mm -hmm. because then you're not limited to where you are. And I guess part of to be good at what you do would be to love what you do or to like what you do, mm -hmm. you know, to enjoy it. Um, because I think because if you're good at what you do, there, there are no limits. The world is available. You know, nowadays we can even work from home. It is so refreshing <laughs> hearing it from a fellow Brunei. Mm. Uh -huh. We don't think like that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Well, I don't know. I mean, because I, for, for me, it's just like the way the world is now, mm. it really doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, you can... You can, I mean, like now that I have the ability, let's say with my coaching, to be sitting in my living room in Brunei, coaching someone in UK, US, wherever, mm -hmm. and being able to earn money doing it. Right. So the, the limits to how you can make your money nowadays is mm -hmm. so different. And, and even things like, like my daughter, my daughter teaches me a lot, so I'm always learning from her as well. So she, she comes to me, she goes, Mommy, you know these YouTube channels, they can make a lot of money. You know, they, they play games and they're paid for it. And I'm like, wow, really? She goes, you know, this guy makes a million dollars. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, so things are changing, yep. right? And it's like, we don't, maybe we don't need to look at the traditional way that we used to make money. Mm -hmm. We just need to start thinking about what it is you're good at, you know, and, and where you can kind of make your money in what area you enjoy mm. because like my daughter she probably thinks she can become a gamer do a youtube channel she'll probably be richer than i am why not right? <laughs> why not right <laughs> so you don't limit your daughters thank you um well game playing yes you have to <laughs> otherwise you know but but the mindset yeah i mean with my daughter what i've tried to do is i've tried to um 
make her make the decisions for her life. So, like, for example, I know she'll be going away to university, she'll be going on, she needs to know how to make the best decisions for herself mm -hmm. without me being the one to tell her what to do. So for me, that's quite important. So sometimes it's like, it's very difficult, but sometimes it's about letting her make the decision she wants to do and learning that, oh, maybe that didn't work, let me do it another way. I mean, it's very, very hard because, you know, as a parent, you're kind of like, no, no, this is the way to do it. You have to do totally this. Totally clinical. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, I mean, if I've noticed the change in her where I actually said to her, look, you're 15 now, I'm not going to stand over you and make sure you do your homework. You are responsible for finishing your homework on time because you know what? If you get in trouble with your teacher for not doing it, I'm not getting involved. <laughs> you take the responsibility. <laughs> and it's changed her the way. So she actually even if she plays games, whatever, she knows she's got to finish certain things, she knows she has to deal with anything that, you know, like any telling off if she hasn't done it, or if a teacher says to her, you know, you could have done better, you know, things like that, then I'll have a discussion with her and say, you know, what did the teacher mean by that, you know, <laughs> what could you have done better, and then she will be the one who will say, I, I could have put more time in, I'm like, really? So you mean you should play less games <laughs> and spend more time? You know, and like it's about, I guess, her coming up with that realization because she's the one who has to live it. Amazing. Mm. You know, on on uh, being a woman leader uh, in Brunei and uh, you know representing Brunei outside, mm -hmm. um, are there challenges or you know, you're just you and and uh, people. Well, no, of course there are challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean. There is a certain mentality, I think, everywhere in the world that women are a particular way. And there is a lot of, like, gender biases, I guess, where, you know, if a woman is, you know, forward, they're bossy. If a man is forward, they're a leader. Mm -hmm. There's all those kinds of things. And that happens in any country. Right. Um, and I guess it's... I've. I've always thought of the thing of it's not about being a man or a woman it's about how capable you are mm -hmm. in whatever that you do and I've always had that belief I guess so for me it's always been about proving that I know what I'm doing or that I'm doing a good job not because I'm a woman mm -hmm. not because I'm a man but just because you are that's just yeah. the way that is important for me yeah right uh, you know I can't help but think about the kind of challenges that you had to go through coming back from the UK at 21 mm -hmm. to lead an uh, all male dominated company. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. You know, were, were those lessons, you know, uh, important in shaping who you are today? Um, a lot of perseverance. I, I can yeah. imagine seeing that the architects will be walking all over you when you speak or when you call for a meeting, no one will turn up. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Uh, which uh, would not surprise me if you were to tell me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But again, it came down to the fact that even though I wasn't an architect, I learned as much as I could right. about architecture. Not necessarily how to draw, mm -hmm. but how the whole process worked. And what ended up happening is I ended up being kind of the, the middle ground between the architects and the clients. Right. So sometimes, you know, you have creative person who's like I want the building to look like this mm -hmm. but it's not practical mm -hmm. and then you have the client who's like I want this but I only have this amount of money it's mm -hmm. not practical so a lot of the times it was about what I ended up my role being ended mediator. up being that yeah was right. basically communicating between the two sides and the industry need people like you <laughs> <laughs> because we can't talk to the artists <laughs> Well, I actually got op offered a job by a Malaysian architect firm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm kind of trying to run my own business. Yeah, because you know, I, I think that, I guess that's important. It's about mm -hmm. understanding both different sides and, and coming up with a compromise sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What advice would you give to young women? Young women, uh, be good at what you do. Mm -hmm. you know, figure out what it is that you like to do and, and go and do it. Um, for me, what I've learned very, very recently is authenticity. So, for me, everything I do now has got to be about being authentic to myself. Being honest. Yeah, so being honest, what my values are, being in line with those values. Mm -hmm. um, life is too short, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I found 
that by being authentic to myself, everything that I do is joyful, is great, is I love it, you know. And that was the one small thing, like the key to me, late to my life lately, was just um, getting in touch with that. Wow. Yeah. Last question, what change? Huh? What change would you like to make? What change would I like to make? Oh, I'd like to help people realize that they have everything within themselves to achieve what it is they want to achieve. And that for everyone to actually work on solutions together, not just businesses, but solutions to problems that we have in this world. I like how you didn't say uh, the, so the, the problems that we have in Brunei. No, but, the but world. You're, you're really global-minded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I wish that you know, more young people can aspire to be like you. A great role model. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thanks. Uh, <laughs>